Can we put on different hats that will help us to think about things in a new light? That's what we're going to talk about today. To change ourselves effectively, we first have to change our perceptions. Stephen R. Covey. Today we're going to talk about a book from Edward de Bono called Six Thinking Hats. This is a way of trying to process information or think about things in a different way. We talked about different ways in the past about how Julius Caesar used to map out his whole wars and then he would turn the map and walk around it so that he could see everything from all angles. It's a little bit different. And I kind of like this thinking because sometimes, you know, we think of problems. I try to think of my problems as my customers. What would be upsetting me? What would be making this hard for me? I try to put myself in their shoes. But this is a little bit different in those types of considerations. I guess the way you think of it. So he, in this book, uses this colored hat analogy as a way of trying to switch up how we're trying to think about things. Because it's not just about turning the board 90 degrees or seeing it from the other person's point of view. This is more like coming up with different ways of just thinking about the ideas, almost entirely different. And in watching a video uh, of the writer talking about this idea, he gives this analogy of two people. One is clean and one is dirty. And you have to decide who should get the bath and the different ways you can think about this. And the logical thinking would say, well, of course, you're going to give the bath to the dirty person. That's one way of thinking of something, logically. But then you could look at it psychologically, he says, that the clean person likes to be clean. So you will make him happy by giving him a bath. Okay, another way of thinking of it. And at, po- at this point, the student who is being asked who should get the bath gets frustrated. I don't know what you want from me. I don't know who should get the bath. The clean person, the dirty person, I don't even understand this. And then the professor says, oh, now this is the philosophical way of looking at it, to which everyone laughs. The marketing point of view says that you offer the bath to the dirty person. The dirty person refuses it. Then you give it to the clean person. And now you have two satisfied customers. Both of them got what they wanted. Give the bath to the clean person. They won't dirty the water very much. And now you can give the rest of the bath water to the dirty person and get them clean anyway. Now you have succeeded in getting both people clean, to which everyone also laughs in the video. And what he hopes for in this whole philosophy of these different hats is that we don't let ego get in the way. We don't just decide what we're going to do and that's just the end of it. He wants us to pull these hats out, maybe not all six in every situation, but whatever hat is going to help us think about this issue differently in a better way so we can use this as a tool or a resource instead of us fighting with each other instead of us thinking our idea is best and that other idea is terrible how can we think about ideas in this creative way so that we can get to agreement we can get to creative problem solving and we can think outside the box and how i got started in this whole area is i started reading a series of how to do A corporate change, not in corporate, maybe, uh, you know, organizational change. How can we make people want to change? How can we think of ideas to get everyone involved in a project, have them think of good strategies of fixing solutions instead of just saying, I'm unhappy, I don't want to do this thing. The primary thing I encountered was going out there and talking about software. I don't want to do the thing you want me to do. What can we do to come together and think about things He calls it innovation way or in a different way. But this is essentially where he's going with in this book. And in this process, it's just not me putting on the creative hat or the logical hat. It is us putting on the different hats together, like maybe me and the customers who are using the software. Let's first think about this problem creatively. We'll we'll go through the hats here coming in a minute. But the idea is that we're going to each put on the same hats at the same time, and try to think about our problems in different ways together. And I think the other power of this is that, okay, so I'm Jill, and I'm coming in, and I want you to use my software. You are my customer, or you are the employee of my customer, and you've had the software pushed on you. You you, you have to use the software. We in leadership have decided you have to use the software. Immediately pits us together as opponents. 
I want one thing, you want the other thing. So now instead of us going in and saying my thinking versus your thinking, we are each going to put on hat to think of these things together as a team. So I think it gets rid of the you versus me kind of opinion. There is a hat that is called the blue hat, and this blue hat is the control mechanism, they call it. This is going to be the person who is the facilitator who's going to control the conversation and make sure everyone's kind of sticking by the rules. So we have to have someone that doesn't maybe have a strong opinion or someone who can act as our facilitator or project manager. See, I'm thinking about it in work terms. But think about it in this kind of term is if you were having a family discussion and you got three kids and a couple and we're, we're trying to decide where we're going to go on vacation this year. And we all have different thoughts and opinions about the whole thing. Maybe you have a neighbor who's not going on this vacation who can act as a facilitator or a adult child who's still in college, can't come on the trip, but will act as our facilitator for this entire process. And of course, what you start with is what problem are we solving? Do we have criteria? So if we were planning this massive vacation and we don't know where to go and we're sort of fighting among ourselves of how we're going to decide how we're going to go, what's our criteria? Well, it has to be seven days. It can only be about this amount of money. It can't be more. It could be less, but we don't want to spend less. And what's the outcome? We have a great family vacation. But you can kind of see in the work world how this works too. We mentioned the blue hat as being the facilitator or the moderator of this process. The white hat is all the information we need to know in order to make a decision. So if we're planning on this trip, it's right now in the middle of November. I'm making up a date. And we know that in Iceland, it's particularly cold and snowy and very, very dark. We know that another trip was to go to Disney World. We also, it's right before Thanksgiving. Very, very busy. You know, so just facts, facts on the ground. It's, it doesn't have an opinion. It doesn't state anything. It's just something that we should keep in mind when we're making these decisions. So the white hat is just, like I said, gathering information. But sometimes that means be, maybe before we have our thinking sessions or we get together and we put on all our hats on, we need to do a little research. We have to decide what we're going to do. We have to figure out more information. Think about it when I was looking for my new job. Obviously, it's going to be, well, I like these people, but I like these people, but I like this job. You know, I have all these opinions here and here and here. And I ended up doing a spreadsheet. But instead, what if I just gathered all the facts? This is how much each job pays. These are the benefits of each of these jobs. These are going to be the hours. These are going to be the people I work with. These are going to be the tasks I deal. These are going to be the tasks I do. And I start fact collecting. So if I realize that there's something I don't know about the new job, I don't know about this vacation we're planning for the family, I don't know enough about your processes in order to help you make decisions about what it is we're going to do. I know that your leadership told us we have to use the software, but how we get there, there's a whole lot of variety right there. I don't know you very well, so maybe we have to do some fact-finding using the white hat in order to make sure we can go into our thinking meetings with enough knowledge. And what's interesting is what happens next. We've read different ways that people apply the hats and use the hats. It's kind of taken on a life of its own. But in this case, we'll just talk about the main hats, and then we'll talk about the order people put them in. We mentioned the blue hat is the big picture, the person who's facilitating the conversation or, you know, kind of, this is our goals. This is what we're, problems we're trying to solve. This is how we have to solve it. Here's some criteria we have. So we need to decide in the next week where we're going on vacation. This is the money. This is what season we're going. We want to spend seven days. You know, that's out there. Then the white hat are the facts and information. Well, right now it's very cold in Iceland. We have to consider that. Right now it's very busy at Disney World. We have to consider that. Just facts. No bad emotions or anything like that. I like the green hat. So when I have used this technique, I use this one next. But essentially, it is generating new ideas. Can we think of anything else? We, we've already talked about Iceland. We already talked about Disney World. Let's, let's think of some creativity. Let's think outside the box. 
What are some other places we could go on vacation? Or even in my situation, maybe I don't take the job, the new job, and I stay at my company. Or I take the new job and I leave my company. Maybe I go find a third job altogether and I do something completely different. Think outside the box. Are you really looking at everything you could be thinking of? That's why I really like to bring in that creative thinking in and next. And what I always like to tell people, too, in this green hat situation is let your mind run free. Don't think at this point about the money. Don't think about anything. Just come up with creative solutions that could meet whatever requirement we're doing it. I mean, that's really the situation where I had in my roof is I was thinking I had to do a roof and a chimney and that's what it had to be. Instead, the chimney became something else that was a lot cheaper. But run wild. Let your imagination go, you know, and try to think of some really interesting ideas. To me, I think the green hat logically comes next, but that's not everyone's opinion. We'll talk about that in a minute. But a lot of people like to go to the yellow hat and the yellow hat is positivity. You know, in the end, these ideas are, they're all good vacations. We're all going to have a good time. I really love the idea of going to Spain. I've never been to Spain. Look at Italy. Italy's great. It has all that amazing food. That's also positive. So then you let the floor go, everybody who's having this discussion, with all the positive things about what's going on. I think that primes it for having a really good outcome in your decision making. Because now we're looking at all the benefits. We're trying to see the opportunities we're given. And even in my situation with my work and the software I was bringing out to customers, it allows people who are maybe more negative about the situation to see the benefits. You know, I totally get why leadership wants us to do a better job with billing. And I understand how leadership needs to know what's going on in this organization. This tracking in the software will give everyone a really good view of all the hard work we're doing here. It takes people who may be negative at that point thinking about some positive things. The next hat I like to go to is the red hat. And the red hat is emotion. It's all feeling. Because one of the things I learned in my work is sometimes when people object to the software I'm bringing them, they can talk logic all day long. I like my system. I know it very well. I can go through the work very easily. That's all that matters. What actually happens is that you start talking to people and they'll say, I'm just not very good with computers. I'm great at my job and I'm afraid that this new computer system is going to make me look terrible. I don't really understand computers. I'm not very good at them. I can't go through them as quickly as I could by writing this on paper or even putting it on a spreadsheet, which is much easier. I, I think that this job might get me fired because I'm just terrible at it. I have had that happen. I spent nights with people who were petrified that they were going to lose their job because my software was going to make them look stupid when they have been fantastic at their job all these years. That's an emotion. You know, I'm worried that this job is going to cause so much work for me that I'm going to miss my kid's life because I'm going to be spending every night working away. It's not factual. It's, it's, it's pure emotion. And you have to deal with that. So hearing how everyone reacts to something, again, if we're planning on a vacation and someone says, you know, to be honest with you, I don't want to go to the ocean. I am scared of jellyfish. Oh, okay. That, you know, maybe we can do some research about a beach that doesn't have jellyfish or something like that. But we have to know how people are feeling. Then comes the uh, last hat I like to use, and that is the black hat. And that's going to be sort of what some people call the negative view, the downsides, the, the what could go wrong kind of piece. Because we have to look at that, too. If we don't look at the downsides of each of the situations, we might not know what we can encounter. If you said, oh, I'm thinking that Iceland's really our best trip, and someone says it is November, they get really severe uh, snowstorms. There's only X many hours of daylight this late in the year because it's so far north. We could get stuck in our hotel for a really long period of time. Boy, that is a big negative. Or that trip, that trip to Italy is incredibly expensive and we could find ourselves running out of money very, very quickly. So it's important to hear 
the risks, the negative side of things. We just can't discount it. Oh, you're just being negative. People who have negative ideas have some very good reasons for it. We need to listen to that. We need to listen to what they're saying. And sometimes people feel like this last black hat needs to be limited, that people can get very negative very quickly, and that if you spend so much time talking about the negatives, it can run away and just run away with your whole plans, your vacation plans, your job plans, your organizational software plans, that it, people build on negativity. And so they feel that they should really limit how much time we have in spending with the black hat just to keep people from going wild. One of what all of this involves too, and I'm not going to go too much into this, but I have done these workshops where we come up with ideas, we put them on a board on post-it notes, and then we have dots. It's called dot voting. And so we're all going to sit here and we're going to start with the green hands and we're going to write on green post-it notes. Okay, what is our brainstorming? Okay, there's Italy, there's Iceland, there's Disney World, there's Disneyland, there's Spain, there's going to the ocean and swimming in the ocean, green. You know, now we take out our yellow ones and we can write our opinions, our positives on each of the yellow post-it notes and stick them to each of the ideas. Then we can also then take our, I don't know, maybe gray post-it notes for the black, for the negatives, the red post-it notes for the emotions. But at some point, we have to vote. And so then this is where we haul out dots. And now we stick dots. We give each person in this group, let's say we come up with 10 vacation ideas. I'm going to give everybody in this discussion three dots. Everyone go place a dot on their vote on what they think is the best idea. And we're going to see if everyone, now that we've thought of things in different ways, all vote on the same thing. So that's dot voting, if you haven't ever heard of dot voting. We did this process with my church. My church was going to tear down our church building and put up a brand new building. And we went through this whole process. Dream big. You know, we've never had a church building where we could do all the things we wanted to do. I remember back when I was in college, we had a ping pong table in the basement. And the ping pong table had to go because we needed classrooms for Sunday school. Now we have room to have a ping pong table and to have Sunday school, if we dream that to be true. So we dreamed big. We thought of everything we could possibly, it'd be nice if there was a laundry room. This is a student church. Maybe people could come and bring their laundry and worship at our church. Then we started going over all the facts and figures. How much money do we have? How much square space do we have? That all came later. I don't remember us going through a red hat or a black hat specifically, but we did go to the voting dot. And then we each got a certain number of dots and had all these different rooms and facilities. And then we could vote what was the most important thing for us because we only had maybe we 40 different rooms that we could have in this new church, but we only got 10 dots. Now we saw where our dots clustered and we had votes on where most of people felt were the most important aspects of this new church. It can be very effective uh, in this dot voting. But this is part of the whole scheme. I like this idea of all of us not switching hats. I, I saw some of the people talking about it where you just let people be different hats. You say, oh, there's uh, Sally over there. She's really negative about the situation. She must be wearing her black hat. Ooh, you know, Bob over there is crying about this new corporate situation with the software. He must be wearing his red hat. The whole point of this whole process is we're going to work together on the same side, all wearing the same hat. And then the facilitator is going to bring us through this process of voting. And you could even create some sort of formulas for this process. I saw this on Wikipedia, and I don't remember this being in the book, but maybe it was in the book, that if you're looking for feedback on some sort of a program or an issue, you always start with blue, then you go to black, we're trying to solve a problem. Go to green. What kind of creative things can we think of? And then we're back to blue. We always begin and end at blue. Or maybe we have an initial idea. We talk about blue. We talk about the white hat, which are all our facts. We then talk about the green, which are, is our idea, our thinking outside the box. It's just a brainstorming idea. We're going to go back to blue again. We're not even going to go to the red hat, the 
know, yellow hat, all those other hats. And again, the situation I said I liked myself to be in is what was called the problem solving hat scheme, which followed basically like this, that you start with a blue hat. We state the facts and everything there. I go to the yellow hats where I talk about what positive can come out of this whole situation. I go to the green hat. Where are we going to think of these ideas outside the box? Then we go to the red, then the black hat. What I thought was interesting is when I was reading some other people's opinions about that, some people said that then at the very end, they go back to the green hat and see if anyone through this entire conversation has any more creative ideas. And then we wrap up again with the blue hats. But I hope that this gives you some ideas of how we can think about problems that we're having, ideas or solution finding or planning a vacation whenever we have a situation where people have many different opinions or we have many different options. This six thinking hat situation can help us get through those problems. Heck, I'm even thinking about finding little tiny mini hats I can put on my desk. So anytime I'm having my own personal kind of solution that I need to come up with, I can just think about each of these hats. So my challenge to you is try to solve your next situation that you have with another person by using at least some of these thinking hats. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. I hope this was creative for you. Like I said, this was kind of life-changing to me. There were some other books I read on organizational change that had different situations, but this one always really stuck with me. And please remember to tell a friend, subscribe to the podcast, let someone else know who might enjoy this podcast. I wanted to let you know that my friend M, who's a wonderful writer and is helping me in this whole podcast process, she has a blog. It is called msgarden.com. Besides being amazingly well-organized and a fantastic writer, she's an amazing gardener. And she has a whole blog talking about flowers, gardens, critters, birds, butterflies, anything that has to do with a garden. And she has beautiful photography. It could be something really helpful to you if you're thinking about having a garden. Or if you just love beautiful photography of birds, gardens, and flowers. And remember, our walk through problem solving starts with small steps and some differently colored hats. 